So, the one thing I notice that happens at many Southern homes is the abundance of hospitality. Um, it's called Southern Hospitality for a reason, and I found it to be real um, just growing up as a little girl on the farm. One of the things that could be noted about visiting my grandparents' home was that you were always going to be greeted, well greeted, with a slice of dessert. Or if it's the right time, like dinner, lunch, breakfast, add an extra plate. It just went without fail. And I want to talk about dessert because a slice of cake was just so meaningful and just so fulfilling and delightful to greet anyone with. Just think about it. If you go to someone's home, let's say you were coming with that Real Housewives of Atlanta drama or energy, but then they greet you with a slice of cake. What you gonna fuss about now? You have you eating cake. Let them eat cake. And I just knew like for this series I wanted to showcase cake. I know I've done desserts, however, it's a little bit different from the actual cake itself. Cake to desserts, cakes to me are the superstars of desserts. They're the celebrity, they're the Beyonce, the icons of desserts. Um, the other cobblers and pies and pastries are cute, that's cute. Cake is what we want. Cake is what we're gonna get. <laughs> um, I just think it's something about that genre, um, that generation that was so intentional about the sweet things in life. I recall listening to an interview with Erin Lauder, um, the granddaughter of Estee Lauder, stated that she, one thing she remembered about going to her grandmother's home is how she always had Godiva chocolates available for anyone who came to visit, including the grandchildren. And I just thought that was the sweetest thing and it reminded me of like going to my grandparents' home in the summer and there was always a beautiful cake on display in the dining room and yeah, it was meaningful. I remember my grandmother not necessarily using mixers to whip up a cake really quick. She did it with her hands. She would have the, this big tin tub, kind of similar to the one that we used to pick blueberries or the ones that I learned how to make biscuits with. And she would have the ingredients and just mixing it with her hands. She only did two that I know of, two types of cakes, which were chocolate and coconut. CC. See both sides like Chanel. <laughs> Those who get it would get it. But yeah, so she would whip up a cake really, really quick. And her cakes were always naked cakes. They were never like gorgeously decorated. But my aunt, who lived there as well, would bring the heat. She would bring the heat with the cakes. I remember Easter time, there would always be a buddy cake. Cake was just the dessert of choice. Um, for sure, way more so than anything else in desserts would be cakes. I mean, but it wasn't just my grandmother's home. I remember playing hide and go seek with my cousins, like her, my grandmother's side of the family, and they all lived on the same road, right? Like their grandparents and their first cousins and all of that lived all on the same road. And we were playing hide and go seek, and me and Rhonda decided that we were gonna hide in her grandmother, my niece, my aunt's house. And nobody was ever gonna find us there because, you know, we playing and you thinking we're right around in the four walls. We done ran to another house down the road. We ran down the road to her grandmother's house, and when we got in, it was a beautiful cake. It was like a seven up cake sitting there, pound cake. And she didn't know how to cut a cake, but I did. I felt special knowing how to cut a cake because those girls were so advanced, they knew how to cook at like four. <laughs> but I knew how to cut a cake because grandmother would make me, 
it was no ask. It would make me go cut a slice of cake for the guests or for granddaddy like some men. You know, they had a protocol when it comes to serving men. But um, I knew how to cut a cake. And so we see this cake. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking about it now. Like, I hope the cake wasn't for someone. We cut it. I cut the cake, cut us both some slices. I don't know if she remembered this, but I do, like yesterday. And no one ever found us. No one ever found us. But <laughs> we had cake, and that was even better. We won, and we're eating cake. But cake was just a part of the narrative. And so when it had come to what type of cake I wanted to do for this series, I thought about doing something different. At first I was going to do your traditional layered cake, but I was like, you know what, let's do something different. And instead of just using flour for the cake, let's incorporate yellow cornmeal. And we can kind of have the best of both worlds into one, meaning the best of, have you had a southern hush puppy? It's like eating cake. And cake combined into one. So. Stone fruit is abundant right about now, and I consider cherries a stone fruit. I mean, you better watch how you bite into it. You better watch how you bite into it. And so I saw these cherries in the market. I'm like, I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make like this upside down cherry situation of a one layer cake. And yeah, I picked up some both are they called black cherries black cherries and red reddish yellow cherries and pitted them washed them really good took the stems out it's a mess I forgot how messy cherries can be and at first I was going to roast the cherries first to just kind of give away from its strength and then um, make it into like this jam situation but then I decided let's just mash it up and put it on a saucer and let it cook down to kind of reduce into this jam situation. So what I did was I seasoned the cherries with lime, the both the zest and the juice, sugar, as well as my star ingredient, lemongrass. Lemongrass is one of those herbs that I don't use enough. I honestly forget about it a lot of times, but when I think of it, I'm like, that's what's going to set this apart from just a traditional standard taste. We know what cherries and lime taste like, but then what happens when you add that element of lemongrass into it? So I took off the husk and began to chop up some bits and put it into the lemon, I'm sorry, into the cherry mixture and let it just reduce down on the stove. And it was just so tangy and beautiful and the sugar was just enough to bring back the sweetness from the cherries because I felt like the lime and the lime zest did cut into that sweetness and the lemongrass but putting back the sugar with that just kind of brings it back <laughs> brings it back where you're eating something sweet and citrusy and so um, then it was time to make the cake I decided to make this cornmeal cake and it's a vanilla cornmeal cake so I mixed sugar and vegan butter mix that well together and then I set it aside then I whisked um, all-purpose flour along with cornmeal and salt baking soda baking powder a little bit of cardamom and then I also added plant milk with about a tablespoon of vinegar to reminisce of buttermilk. And so it's time to bring all this together, right? So how I was taught is that you want to kind of layer it together opposed to just like bringing it all into one. Lay layering it means that I take a third of the flour, add it to the butter and sugar and then I mix it together then I add a third of the milk and vinegar and mix that together 
and I keep repeating it too. The flour is gone and the milk is gone. Once that happens, I then added about a tablespoon of vanilla. I really wanted vanilla to be pronounced in this cake when you bite in. And so, um, I added the vanilla, did one last mix. You don't want to over mix or under mix. But yeah, I was able to do that and the batter came out like a thicker batter. Almost reminiscent of cornbread, but it's a cake. <laughs> Can we back up really quick? One of the other things that I added to the compote is ginger. I put little bits of ginger in there because I kept thinking like this is going to be a welcoming taste when they're biting into that cake. You have the sweetness of the cherry, then the tartness of the citrus, and then the vanilla fragrance of the cake, and then ginger. It's a wrap. So yeah, I added ginger. And so now it's time to put the cake together, right? So I lined the, the pan, as I stated before, with this time the cherry mixture. And honestly, I could have done the whole thing, but I just wasn't for sure, because I'd never tried this. You guys are trying, this is my first time trying it too. And so I lined it with the cherry compote and then poured the batter, the cake batter on top of it. And I put it into a 350 degree oven for about an hour and 10 minutes. I kept timing it just to make sure that it was well cooked and testing it with a stick in the center of the cake to make sure it comes out clean. If it comes out clean, the cake is ready. If it comes out with residue, then it's not. Keep baking it. And yeah, after an hour and 10 minutes, the cake was ready. And I set it aside for 20 minutes just to cool down properly. And then was going to come the challenge, which was flip this cake over and be able to serve it like an upside down cake. Think upside down pineapple cake. Pineapple upside down cake, whatever you call it. Whatever. But so after it cooled down, I took the plate, I'm like, okay, please God, and turned it over really quick. Like, you gotta commit to it, don't have to commit. Like, boom, we're experts here. And I could feel the cake slide to the plate, which meant that there was no cake stuck on the sides of the spray form pan, which is a blessing. I didn't want that because then the cake is ruined, right? And yeah, I took it up, pulled the parchment back, which is my favorite, and it cooked beautifully. And so the rest of the cherry mixture that I did not add to the cake, I added it on top of it, um, now the top, because some of the cherries just kind of seeped into the cake opposed to just staying on the bottom itself, just holding to that bottom and seeped into the actual batter itself. And yeah, we have this amazing cake. Uh, the texture was amazing, so was the taste. It was reminiscent of just this hint of cornbread, but with this amazing cherry mixture and summer. It was reminiscent of summer, and I'm sure that if your guests come to your home and that's what you have on the plate, they're gonna be so glad they came.